40. Okay, so do you have any question on midterm plan on next week or any anything related with what we are discussing now? Ah. The ID, the question is, is ID your personal or KUID? <laughs> I don't know if, let me check. I have my own KUID, which has uh, picture in, so I suppose that should be okay. Although, strictly speaking, this, uh, so first of all, your ID has to have your picture on. And strictly speaking, this, my ID, it's, it doesn't have any legal uh, power. You know, anyone could copy this and make it. This was all. I suggest you bring your uh, driver's license or um, Jumin card or your passport, whatever, legal ID. If you have left that back in your house, which is located in, not located in Seoul also, bring your uh, school ID. And then I'll talk to uh, teaching. I, I, get, um, I have two graduate students who will uh, be with you during the midterm exam. So I'll, I'll, I'll do something about that. So try to bring your legal ID. Anything else? It'll be easy. So don't worry too much. Don't try to memorize everything, but you have to uh, know some basic stuff. All right, so I assume you don't have any question. So let's get started. Today we will finish our single component universe. So far we discussed um, radiation only and matter only for flat universe. So the last topic today is to discuss lambda only universe. So lambda only. That means the uh, equation of state parameter parameter that relates the pressure and the energy density dimensionless parameter is set to minus one. So if I uh, remind you, the Friedman equation we C square I have single component zero and a minus one plus uh, omega uh, three somewhere. That, that is the Friedman equation for single component with flat universe. So in the case of omega being minus one, I have minus three that 
gives me minus two minus minus plus. So I have a dot square is a pi g over three c square epsilon. Let's call epsilon lambda. And a plus square. So definition of Hubble constant was a dot over a and evaluate. Okay, that was the definition of Hubble constant, Hubble, con Hubble expansion rate as of today. You can get it from here. You move this to there and evaluate. So that automatically gives me for this universe a pi g over three c square is lambda should be h zero. So this is this is h zero. So this equation becomes rather simple. A dot is equal to h zero a. Assuming a dot can be negative because that means its universe could shrink. But a is a scale factor. It's a dimensionless quantity for us um, representing the size of the universe. That has to be positive or equal to zero. So we don't worry about minus sign. So this is like um, a dot is da over dt. So a da over a should be equal to h zero dt. If you integrate this, the left hand side is integrate over scale factor. The right hand side is integrate integral over time. So you read, and then you. On the left hand side, you have log a and you have ht plus constant. And then by exponentiating both terms, you get a, which is the function of time, should be um, exponential h0, h minus e0. And this gives us correct uh, boundary condition of a t is equal to zero is t zero, not t is equal to zero. t is equal to t zero. These two are equal to each other. So exponential zero is one. So that is satisfied. So what is this? This is an exponential expansion of our universe. So if I use the chair. Exponential. Extension. First, if I draw a simple diagram of a t over t at t is equal to zero, a should be one, that's the boundary condition. And what we are trying to say is according to this formula, universe is now behaving something like this, exponential curve. For lambda only universe, as I perhaps said several times by now, our universe as of today is about 70% of our entire energy density is dark energy. So we are, we live, we think we live in a time when the dark energy is dominant. Therefore, our, the expansion of the universe as of today is accelerating due to the so-called dark energy. But never, uh, we don't know what it is yet. 
Okay. Um, so when we discuss the, the generic case, when omega is less than minus one third, then the age of the universe is coming infinite and the horizon distance is also infinite. Okay, so for the case of lambda only universe, let's compute, uh, let's use different color. We want to distance of proper distance as of today. That's um, is C inverse dt over a t t of emission to today. So we plug this in integral t e over t zero exponential h zero t minus t e dt. I'm sorry, uh, T zero. So to do this integral, let's say T minus T zero, I'll call that to be T prime. Then my integral becomes, when T is T E, I have T e minus T zero. And when T goes to T zero, my T prime goes to zero. Exponential H zero T prime. And DT becomes minus DT. So I have DT prime and minus. So this is, so integral of this is, one over h zero exponential h zero t prime and it's a minus so i can flip the t e minus t zero and zero so that gives me uh, i forgot speed of light c of h zero uh, having yes i get exponential H zero T E minus T zero minus put plug T prime at T prime from zero is exponent zero, which is one. So we can further reduce this. We know that there's a relationship between scale factor and The ratio of scale factor is one plus c. So this is one. And ATE, uh, according to this, ATE is TE minus T zero. So like this is exponential H zero. And T zero, T zero minus T E. Uh, uh, there's something wrong here. Where did I scroll? Uh, so that's T E T zero. Uh, okay, I scrolled up right here. It's inverse of A. So instead of T minus T zero, I should have flipped the sign. So it's a T zero minus T. So that gives me T zero minus T as T prime 
So I have to have T zero minus T. So that's T zero minus T. So that's T zero minus T. And then, right. So from this, our DP T zero is C over H zero. And if you take a look at this, if I move this to the left, it's nothing but uh, right. This. So if we are looking at certain redshift, this would be the proper distance as of today. And proper distance at the time of emission, we always said that we need to take into account of the expansion of the universe. So we, that means we have to divide that by one plus C. So that's the end of uh, our discussion with single component to universe when universe is spatially flat. Now let's summarize first. Do that. So I have different types of uh, chalks. Let's see if this is better. So we have first of all matter only. And radiation only. And at the end, lambda only. For the matter, omega was W, was the uh, equation of state parameter, was zero. For the radiation only, something is tilted. And for the radiation, W was one half. And for lambda, W was minus one. And for scale factor, in terms of P, for the case of matter, it was two thirds. And for the case of radiation, it was one half. And in the case of dark energy, it was exponentially increasing. And we also discussed Hubble construct. For the case of matter, this was two, three, eight, zero. I'm sorry, T zero. And in the case of radiation only, I have T zero. And in the case of lambda, we just discussed it was uh, a pi g over three c square epsilon lambda. The constant we take care of square, so it was square root. And we also discussed the horizon distance. So d horizon as of 
Okay. It was three times CT zero. And for the radiation, it was two times CT zero. And for lambda, he said it's infinity. So we, this was equal to um, C over H zero. And that was two C over H zero for your reference. That's what we did for last, I think, two weeks. There are several things I'd like to discuss. First of all, no matter which universe we think of, they are all expanding. So one question you may ask might be, For one question, who is or well, what is driving this expansion? Let me call it repulsive expansion. Remember, we have radiation, matter, and this mysterious dark energy. Even in all the universe, for example, for the matter, there's an attractive gravitational force. So they tend to gather according to Newton's gravitational uh, force. For the radiation, it has mass. Lambda, we don't know. But in all the universe, lambda wasn't the driving force of evolution. Then the question is, we, we naively think that the gravity, the force of gravity should dominate evolution of the universe. Because remember, when we derive Friedman equation, we only have mass and we only have Newtonian force. You may say, okay, that's a classical incorrect derivation. So we go to Einstein's uh, general theory of relativity. We have one side geometry of universe and the other side simply various forms of energy were in it. That was it. We didn't specify any strong interaction or weak interaction. So the big question is, who is, what is driving this repulsive expansion? Even if naively thinking the gravity should uh, attract each other. So this is very strange, at least to me. And it's now my understanding is that let's carefully think why we think our universe expands. Well, the prime reason is that observation tells us such an expansion. And we, this entire argument was based on Friedman equation. 
And this Friedman equation is simply a differential equation. And such differential equation has many different solutions. Unless you give enough boundary conditions for us, initial conditions. So it's a mixture of, I think, a mixture of initial condition and and part of the reason is that there is a solution at least allows recursive expansion of the universe. Therefore, one answer to this question is the gravity itself. It's a recursive gravity that was built in the Friedman equation allows recursive expansion recursive expansion of the universe. Sounds strange, but that seems to be the case so far within this mathematical framework and also based on our observations so far. And number two, things that you can observe here, the increase of scale factor is slowest when there is a radiation only. It gets faster and it's extremely fast with the darker energy. And that seems to be related with this, uh, uh, not this, the mathematical structure built in the Friedman equation, it's very difficult to uh, intuitively understand why this particular behavior would happen. One except one uh, one maybe reason is this has degree of freedom, extra degree of freedom when universe expands. It scales with a power of minus four. So it loses energy more rapidly than matter. So that's the only difference between matter and radiation. So far, as far as I know, so that must give you some, some hints on this. All right, so until right now is the, uh, the range of your midterm exam. From now on, we discuss uh, multi-component universe. Any questions so far? For single component universes, we could deal with analytically, meaning I can I can write there was a question. Can I explain more about recursive grav uh, gravity? It's simple, it's very simple. Our intuition or our Newtonian gravity is telling us they, they attract each other. Then how come our universe expands? In Newtonian mechanics, you know, if you are at Earth, you, you have an object, you, you 
throw it, then it comes back. But if you throw this fast enough, then it will escape the Earth, regardless of the gravity. So the classical anal analog of throwing this fast enough velocity will make our this Earth and this object universe to be expanding. Even if all the force related with this system is only gravity. So even with gravity, you can think of expanding universe with this particular initial condition. So that's one classical way of thinking it. But when we move to Friedman equation, let's think carefully. What we did was we should have used general theory of relativity, but let's assume that. We started with Friedman equation. And we have demanded one boundary condition. A is equal to one at today. That allows us to have a solution on scale factor that allows the expansion of the universe. We only have gravity. We didn't put electromagnetic interaction in it. Because it didn't matter. Electromagnetic interaction, strong interaction, electro weak interaction, they are relevant at very, very, very early universe. So within our discussion, this expansion was from number one, Friedman equation, number two, our uh, initial conditions so far. We didn't actually discuss initial, we only discuss one boundary condition at t is equal to t zero. And then th this solution allows the expansion of the universe and then consistent with our observation. So compared with my classical analogs, this is only a gravity related system. So there must be repulsive gravity. If you don't like it, you can say, okay, well, it's an initial condition. Usually if you throw things out hard enough, then you have an um, repulsive expansion of the universe. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a little strange to me as well. So, no, 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 no. The repulsive gravity and anti gravity is different. <laughs> the discussion is getting interesting. So in particle physics, we have matter. And we discuss the proton and electron, elementary particles. But we also have what we call antimatter. anti-proton, positron, and so on. All the properties are same except the electric charge or charged particles. We have anti-particles um, even for neut neutrons and uh, neutral particles. So let's say I have a mass of 
electron. I have another mass of electron. I have two electrons. Let's forget about the electromagnetic force. Even if the, their mass is tiny, there must be gravitational force. We know that what we know what that is. This is the gravitational force. And anti-gravity is what if you have gravitational force between two antimatters at the same distance will be the same or will be minus of that bar. So this is what we call anti-gravity. And that has nothing to do with what I am talking about. In our universe, in the beginning of the universe at least, we have same amount of matter and antimatter. People are trying to answer this question experimentally, and we don't have the answer yet. It's like this. You, <coughs> you make a hydrogen atom, P, E minus. This is your hydrogen atom. And this will fall down under the gravity. But somehow you can make, if you can make proton bar with Strand, will this also fall down or it will move up under gravity? This one we don't have, we have tons of theories, but we don't have any experimental results yet. It has to come within uh, at least within 10 years. So we we'll have experimental answer on the existence of anti-gravity. Okay. Great. These are great questions to think about. And of course, we are trying to answer. All right, now we discuss something more realistic. That is multi-component universe. Five point four, according to my lecture note. So let's go back to the original Friedman equation. So we write H square plus eight pi G over three C square. And I have epsilon P minus kappa C square R zero square, A square. So this was a uh, equation that we discussed many, many times. I remind you of what we did in chapter four, because I'm pretty sure that uh, you forgot some part of it. Uh, where is it?
Okay, here we go. If we assume kappa is zero, we have h square is a pi g three c square epsilon t. So we want from this case we define uh, so called critical density, which is a function of time as we c square over a pi g a g square. Kappa z is zero is only on this case. And epsilon c is just a our convenient definition. And we want to get rid of H Hubble expansion rate in our general uh, Friedman equation. And the way we do is I re express I, my Hubble expansion rate is here. So I, I this can be um, a pi g over three c square if you want to see that is equal to a pi g three c square epsilon minus kappa c square over i zero square a square so now i get rid of the our expansion rate and from there what we did was uh, we move things let's move this to the right and this to the left so that overall sign uh, becomes epsilon minus epsilon c becomes this becomes plus so kappa c square over i zero square a square that's the intermediate result here we define what's called density parameter capital omega function of t is dimensionless quantity which is the ratio of epsilon divided by this uh, critical density. If you divide uh, this by Hubble expansion rate, So H square is here. This is H square. I get rid of this one, and I have epsilon over epsilon c. That is omega. This term is one. So it's becoming omega minus one. I have kappa c square r square square a square now let's leave h square on the right hand side and it's a uh, we want to have one minus omega so we want to have this and let's evaluate this okay so one minus omega zero is minus kappa c square over i zero square h zero square 
And this is the result that we want to use. So uh, what we want to do is to rewrite the original uh, free band equation. So that's uh, H T square plus eight pi G over three C square epsilon. Now I want to get rid of kappa. So according to this, uh, kappa C square I zero square is right there. So that's uh, minus that's uh, H zero square one minus omega zero. And I am wondering if sign is correct. I forgot this uh, A square. And then I want to have minus sign. So it's omega zero minus one over a square is the result. And we want to divide this by h zero square. So that is H square over H zero square. And I get rid of this. And H zero is related with epsilon zero with this constant. So I get rid of this. So it's epsilon over epsilon C zero minus A zero is canceled, omega zero minus one over A squared. All right, so this is the equation that we want to pay attention to, at least today. So we, what we did was we expressed our Friedman equation with uh, other equation, which is so mathematically equivalent, but the significance of this equation is this is still a curvature term. Essentially coming from there, but without explicit kappa. So let's remember that, you know, when you see this, oh, there is no kappa. So this must be equation for flat universe. No, this is a still general equation with a curved space, but that curved space is hidden here. All right. There are several steps we want to move on. And we have some water. <clears throat> Let's recall that energy density of matter 
at particular time to a at particular scale vector has the relationship with respect to matter as of today by a power of cubic because it's directly inversely proportional to the volume and in the case of radiation we have extra degree of freedom so it loses energy faster and for dark energy or cosmological constant this is constant So we're going to now change the first term in the right hand side. Where do I at the bottom? Uh, you can see this bottom. So we finally have H square over H zero square as. We have now multiple components and we used a dimensionless density parameter capital omega as the normalized energy density for total. So having that in our mind, we can rewrite omega, let's say four, I'm sorry. Omega matter at, as of today scaled by a power of three. We are implicitly saying that capital Omega M zero is equal to or defined by epsilon M zero normalized by critical density as of today. And that's true for radiation and lambda. And I have omega radiation <laughs> zero. Here I have a power of four. And for lambda, there's no a term, but we have last term. I want to make it positive. So I flip again the order a square. So this is now Friedman equation that contains three different components. when the universe is in general curved. Okay. Whew. It's complicated. So let me erase half of this. Because we haven't finished it, the discussion. Um, what we are going to do we'll, this is a square, the left hand side is a square. So I want to square root of it. Then I have um, H, H is A dot over A. So I want to have H zero minus one because of this. And from A, H, A dot. Then I have to get rid of A in the uh, denominator here. 
So that's equivalently saying that I want to multiply a square because I already get square root of it. So I'm going to have omega mass zero. Instead of a, I eventually have to have square root of it. So this is from there. And I have for the radiation, I have a4 becomes a2. And for lam uh, lambda, it's a square plus one minus omega zero. A square is cancelled. Therefore, this would be the relation. Now we can further rewrite a that is d a over d g. So we move this to the left and move everything else to the right. So that gives me a h zero d g. So formally, I can integrate. So. Uh, yeah. H zero T after the integral is only we have to integrate over scale factor from zero to A only. But A is a use. So to be mathematically correct, we have to be doing something like this. And I have omega m zero over A prime plus omega radiation A prime square plus omega lambda zero a prime square plus one minus omega zero there's no a so if you can do this in the integral analytically you you can solve the entire evolution of universe. And for single component universes in three different cases, that's what exactly did. We only have one term in the denominator at each case. So the integration was possible. But now we don't have analytic solution. But nonetheless, You know, you could simplify this. Some function of a prime with progress omega m radiation lambda and omega zero d a prime. It's just one dimensional integral. So numerically, you can do any time. If you have a computer, and if you, if you have numerical values of these parameters, then you can integrate. One thing is when, when A approaches zero, things are breaking up. So you cannot approach to exactly zero. The theory will fail anyway because we didn't include the quantum mechanics. But if you don't approach to zero, then you get most part of the scale behavior of scale factor from today to from particular A value to very early universe numerically. Uh, 
The next topic is matter plus curvature. We had well, we don't have enough time to finish that part. So instead, I am going to do something different. And that is um, ah, right here. So I have to go to all the way to just one. Oh, I, what am I doing? Share. So this is the numerical integration of the equation that we just discussed. So, this is today. And as you move go back, we approach to matter lambda equivalent error quickly. So as we discussed, this period is matter dominant. That's why A is time power of two thirds. And if you Continue, continue to integrate. I approach to what we call radiation dominant error. So A behaves time power, power of one over two. And I stop integrating it around uh, log HT to be minus 10. And if we go back here, The, our future is even more dark energy dominant and it'll, it will be expanding forever. So if this is true, then if we live long enough, we won't be able to see any stars I, I'm sorry, any galaxies, because all the galaxies from us will move away according to this. There are two things. The solar system is gravitationally bounded. So it's not affected by the expansion of the universe. So we will have still stars our sun will have moon and so on. And in fact, our Milky Way is also gravitationally bounded. So outside of our Milky Way will remain. So it's not actually true that we will be alone. We will be with stars in our Milky Way. But the sad thing is, um, as I said in the early, stage of the class, the nearest galaxy, M31, Andromeda galaxy, has blue shift and they are approaching us. So I forgot some 50 billion uh, years or so, they will collide with the Milky Way. It's a very catastrophic thing will happen. But no, no one in this class will be there. So let's don't worry too much about it. Uh, I have this tiny piece of computer code. I'm not trying to explain this. I'm just saying to you that the numerical calculation of the evolution of the entire universe, you could do it 
with only this piece of code. And more than half of them are just uh, cosmetics of the plot. The actual computation is done by several lines. So, okay, I'll finish the lecture today right here. So we initiated our discussion on multi-component universe and we reached to this. And this integral will give you uh, the answer either numerically or analytically depending on your situation. So from we start this uh, next Tuesday with this equation. All right, any question for today? Nothing. So for next three lectures will be delivered as rec pre-recorded movie files. So this would be uh, my last online communication with you during the class. Of course, you can still use uh, Cacao talk. But nevertheless, I wish you good luck with your midterm exam. I hope it's not too difficult to uh, follow. All right, if there's no more question, I'll stop here and I'll see you in two weeks. Right? Stop recording.